Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 68. Hey, if you want to download this file, BI 348 chapter 11 video 68, and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're still in chapter 11 doing simulation. And here's our problem for this video. A construction company builds industrial buildings. The projects are sequential, groundwork, then foundation, then the framework, then finish. The probability distribution for time in weeks for each step in the process are listed below. Calculate the expected time to finish the project, standard deviation, and the estimated probabilities for the possible outcomes for time to finish the project. In particular, managers want an estimate for the probability of finishing in 30 weeks or less. Now, I've color coded this, and there's a little legend over here. Right here, this is the probability distribution for groundwork. For here's the probabilities, here's the number of weeks. So this is from past data that we know this about this part of the project. For foundation, here it is. Probabilities and number of weeks. Framework, probabilities, number of weeks. To finish the project, probability number of weeks. Now, as we've seen in earlier videos, we can build a simulation formula with a random variable based on a relative frequency distribution from past data like this. The formula for step one, groundwork, will have to reflect these probabilities. Inside this formula for the second variable, here's the foundation. That formula will have to randomly create number of weeks for foundation based on these probabilities. The formula for the third variable will have to use these probabilities to estimate randomly these number of weeks. And finally, for the finished part, that's the fourth random variable in the simulation formula, these probabilities will have to be used by the formula to randomly select between 12, 13, and 14 weeks. Now, we've actually done this before. We did it a couple times already. We're going to have to use a special extra column at the front of each one of these probability distributions. For the yellow ones, we're going to have to have cumulative probabilities. For the orange ones, cumulative probabilities, and so on. Then we'll simply use lookup and the RAND function. Now, this will be the third time we've seen a formula like this. We've just never had to do four of them all in one formula. Now, for cumulative probability, we always start with 0. And then now I need to add here 20%. And then when I get down to here, 20 and 0.45. So I'm going to use equals sum. Click on the first probability, colon, close parentheses. And I have to lock that first cell reference to create an expandable range. I hit F4. Control Enter and copy down. We can see we have an expandable range. And that will work fine as our lookup value for approximate lookup. We have to do the same thing for each one of these. 0, Enter, equals sum, colon, close parentheses, and lock this with the F4 key, copy it down. 0 equals sum. The very first one, colon, close parentheses, lock the first one, F4, Control Enter, and copy it down to get our expandable range. Finally, we have to do our fourth one, 0 equals sum, colon, close parentheses, and F4, Control Enter and copy it down. Now, our math formula is going to be this. Total weeks for the project, x sub g, that's for our groundwork, plus x sub foundation, that's for the foundation. x sub frame, that's for framing, plus x sub finish work. Each one of these is the number of weeks from a probability distribution, which will be randomly selected in our formula. All right, you ready for this? Equals, and we're not going to use VLOOKUP, we talked about Look up. When you're doing approximate match, look up oftentimes is a little bit faster. We use RAND function to randomly generate a number between 0 and 1, which will represent cumulative probability from a uniform distribution, comma, but the fact that we have an array or a lookup table 
First column has cumulative. Second column has the weeks we want to randomly select. And if you're not sure exactly why this works, go back a couple of videos. The video on random variables, I explain this in great detail. All right, that's the first one, but watch this. I don't want to have to keep typing this, so I'm actually going to highlight all the way to the comma. That's lookup ran comma, control C. And now I'm going to come to you and close parentheses plus control V. The lookup value is the same. It's just a different probability distribution table we're looking up. So I highlight. That's for the foundation variable. So far we have groundwork, foundation, random variables plus control V, and I'm going to highlight the third table. First column's got the cumulative. Second table's got the actual random number of weeks for this framing part of our sequential project. Close parentheses plus control V, and we'll enter in the last lookup table. Close parentheses. So now we have one, two, three, four randomizing variables based on one, two, three, four different probability distributions. So now there is one possibility. If I hit the F9 key to random, there's another possibility. So 38 weeks, 30 weeks, 36 weeks. Now we need to repeat this many times. I'm going to have a number one in the cell, point my cursor to that little fill handle, and then when I see my crosshair, right click, drag down and back up. I point to series. I want to fill a series down the column. Step value 1, I want to end at 10,000. Enter, and there we have 10,000 numbers. Now, the trick that we've been using, because randomizing formulas copy down 10,000 rows take a long time to calculate, is of course we use our data table with an empty cell column input. So I highlight. Control shift down arrow, control backspace, and I go up to data, data tools, what if analysis, data table, or the keyboard Alt DT. We do not need a row input, we need a column input. We trick it, give it an empty cell, and the data table will try to keep substituting all these values from the column into there. But it won't work, because that cell is not connected to the formula. When I click OK, it's just a way of tricking data table to much more quickly create all of our randomized, simulated total number of weeks for our project formula. If I hit F9, you can see, sure enough, it is simulating 10,000 each time. Now, we want to go ahead and calculate the mean, the standard deviation, min, and max. And we saw. Last video, how instead of using the individual functions, we can use the aggregate function. Now, the first argument in aggregate is function number. And I've already put the function number over here. 1 is for average, 7 is for standard deviation, 5 is min, and 4 is max. So I click there for function number. We're using the second one down here, comma, options. We don't need any options. So we select 4, comma. And then we're using the reference here. So I click in the top cell, Control shift down arrow, F4 to lock it. All we need is that first reference, close parentheses, Control enter, and copy it down. So it looks like the average time to finish this sequential project is about 33 and a half hours. And if we hit F9, we get slightly different estimates, but each one is pretty darn close to 35 and a half hours. Standard deviation is 2.8 hours. The min is 25, and the max is 40. Now, I want to show you something interesting. When you have a probability distribution like this, if we did our expected mean formula, which we learned in our prerequisite class and even earlier in this class, we could do the sum product of the probabilities times the actual x values, do Expected value for the first distribution added to the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. But actually, I set this table up just like this, because I don't want to do four different sum ifs and just use the plus symbol. I'm going to use the single sum product and use array one all of the weeks times all of the probabilities. Now, to get this to work right, each one of the individual tables has to add up to 1, which of course it does. But that formula right there 
could get our answer for our bosses to one of the question, which is what's the average time for finishing this sequential project, or what's the expected value? And notice when I hit the F9 key, it, it's virtually exactly the same. Now, as we mentioned earlier, when we did other simulation examples, that's fine and dandy, and even these statistics are helpful. But seeing the full frequency distribution with all of the probabilities is oftentimes the main reason that we do simulations like this. So that's a pretty nice formula, but we want to see the probability of getting 33.6 hours. Now, before we look at our frequency distribution, we can also calculate a formula to answer the boss's questions. What's the probability that the number of weeks is less than or equal to 30? Equals count ifs. Click in the top cell, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace, comma. And now I need to, in my formula, join the comparative operator to that x value. Double quote, less than or equal to, and double quote. Then I have to join it using the ampersand to that 30. Close parentheses divided by, and I already did my count down there, 10,000. Control, Enter. So 14.85, and if I hit the F9 key to randomize our simulated values, I get slightly different values for the probability that a particular project will take 30 or fewer hours. Now again, these are individual statistics. We like to do an entire frequency distribution and relative frequency distribution. Now I already did this because we've done this like five times already in this chapter. We listed our upper values for each one of the frequency array function. We entered our frequency array function and calculated each one of the frequencies. Then we calculated our probabilities. Now, in this video, which I haven't done earlier, I do want to create a frequency distribution because sometimes you like to see the actual shape of the data. And we can kind of see it. it. It looks like it's got somewhat of a symmetrical shape with the highest one right around where our mean is. So I'm going to highlight the column with the label and just the frequencies go up to Insert, Column, Column. Click on the columns, Control-1 to open up our task pane. I'm going to change the gap width to 0. Go over to the Fill, Fill, Vary Colors by Point, Border, Solid Line. Let's give it some black. We did a lot of this back in Chapter 2, I think it was. Definitely need to go to our green plus and say axis titles. I have that one selected with a solid line. So I simply type an equal sign that shoots me up to the formula bar. I'm going to click on the relative frequency one and enter. Now we click on the horizontal axis, equal sign, this x variable, and enter. Right click, because that's not the correct set of labels down here, right click, select data. And I want to change and edit the horizontal category. I click Edit, and now I'm going to highlight, including that empty cell at the end. Click OK, click OK. That's already looking much better. Now I want to do one last thing. I want to come over here and say Data Labels. Click on the arrow, More Options. That didn't work. It's supposed to pull it right up to this series. Label Options. And this is the one I want. But before I do that, I want to uncheck Value and click on Values from Cell. And I'm going to actually list the relative frequencies or the estimated probabilities. Click OK. Now I want to do something else. I want to come over to the Properties in our Task Pane. Alignment, come over to Text Direction, and we want Rotate All Text 270. Now I want to click and try and select the entire inside part of the chart, and click the middle circle and drag down a little bit. Click on the label. Maybe I want to come up to Home and change it to 10, 10 and Enter. Now I have a visual picture and the actual probability. So I can hit the F9 key and watch my histogram 
with my relative frequencies or estimated probabilities change. So now we can answer whichever question our boss might have. There's the average time. There's the probability of less than 30. And we can pick out any particular interval here and look at the probabilities or look at our histogram. All right, so in this video, we saw how to take one, two, three, four different relative frequency distributions, build four different randomizing variables into our simulation formula, and then answer some questions about number of weeks to finish a sequential project. All right, so in our next video, which will be our last video for Chapter 11, we'll see how to calculate the probability that a particular team will win the World Series using simulation. All right, we'll see you next video.